What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Now, hopefully we've forgotten all about the video we did yesterday, because today we are going to my favorite army, the Tau. Now, I know a lot of you guys hate the Tau, but it's alright. We'll take that hate and make it great. That was very cheesy. <laughs> but anyway, guys, today we are talking about a awesome, awesome battle suit of the Tau Empire. We are talking about the XV-22 Stealth Suit. Now, if you guys don't know, we do have a playlist going on on the battle suits of the Tau Empire. I will link that at the end of this video so you can go back and check it. We've got a bunch of videos on there. I think we've got like eight, maybe nine. So now let's dive into the Stealth Suit for the Tau Empire. So the XV-22 stealth suit has actually been piloted by three Shas-O in the Tau Empire. We've got Shas-O Ores Ka, which was the Tau commander who led the Tau forces during the Kurava system campaign. He used the stealth suit and he used it with different uses of support systems and battle suit weapon systems that you know we usually don't talk about for example the more common form of this or the most notable is the xv-22 stealth suit that commander shadow sun wields so commander shadow sun is the overall commander of the tau fire cast forces after farsight left the empire so due to her rank and status she is one of the few tau commanders who has been entrusted with the xv-22 stealth suit now this stealth suit has successfully basically aided her in making the third field expansion very profitable for the Tau. Now besides that, the other notable guy who wields this armor is Shas O Kais, which is the Tau commander who led the forces during the Dark Crusade. So basically this is the guy you play in the uh, PC game, uh, was it Dark Crusade I think that's what it's called? Uh, but anyway, he fought on the planet of Cronus and he utilized a variety of weapons such as flamers, fusion blasters, missile launchers, etc. So you could really kit it out really badass. But, you know, the one we're more used to or the more common version of this is Shadow Sun's stealth suit, which just has dual um, fusion blasters. But before we dive into the armament of this battlesuit, let's go into their schematics and overall usage of the XV-22 stealth suit. So it is an experimental Tau battlesuit that has been recently developed by the Earthcast. Now Tau battlesuit technology is constantly evolving, the Tau do learn from their experiences and their mistakes, and now they have created this product of innovation. It is indeed the latest evolution of stealth suit technology that incorporates cloaking technology, targeting systems, and a miniaturized shield generator. Now the XV-22 stealth suit itself is similar to that of the XV-15 and XV-25 stealth suits, but it is designed to fulfill a similar role in covert operations that require a higher degree of stealth. The XV-22 was originally designed to replace the XV-15 as the standard in stealth suit armory, but due to the Capo Mortis incident where the Imperial Archmarines managed to recover captured XV-15 stealth suit technology, the Tau then rushed to create the XV-25 stealth suit into a larger production. And since it was easier to manufacture, they went ahead and made the XV-25 the, I guess, this, the go-to stealth suit instead of the XV-22. But thus far, it has proven effective, most notably when Commander Shadowsun ambushed a column of Lehman Rust tanks during the fighting on Mugaloth Bay. Now while the stealth suit's twin fusion blasters ensured that none of these lumbering battle tanks would survive, the ability to disappear into terrain kept the foe from drawing an accurate bead on Shadowsun's position. So if you guys want more lore on the Battle of Mugulath Bay between the Imperial Guard, the Space Marines, and I believe it was the Admech against the Tau, that is an awesome fight. Uh, we do have two videos on this, so again guys, check it out. It's the Battle on Mugulath Bay. And now on to everybody's favorite portion, the armament of this battle suit. So the XV-22 stealth suit incorporates many of the standard features shared by Tau battlesuits, and is very similar, like I said, to the XV-15 and XV-25 stealth suit. The similarities include the incorporated Tau jetpack, which combines anti-gravity and jet propulsion technology. This jetpack allows the battlesuit to maintain a stable platform from which to fire its weapons, even when on the move, and thus it provides a great deal of mobility for the user. 
The jetpack also allows the stealth suit to be deployed from high altitudes via transports on orcas and mantas, and it will safely allow the battlesuit to descend onto the surface of the planet. Also, this jetpack incorporates advanced sensor columns that are built into the helmet, and it thus it allows the user to gather more accurate battlefield data and thus assist in making decisions on where to best deploy or where to use like the accompanying drones, etc. Now, unlike the Crisis suit, the XV-22 stealth suit possesses the unique ability to camouflage its wearer using its suite of stealth technologies. Now, the suit's integrated holographic disruption field achieves its effects through the disruptor emitters arrayed all over the battlesuit. The holographic disruption field can operate in two modes. The default, or passive mode, utilizes a range of material technologies to dampen the suit's electromagnetic signature so that enemy scanners are far less likely to detect it. This mode is called passive because its use cannot be detected by enemy sensors. Now, rather than attempting to interfere with enemy sensor systems directly, it simply masks the suit itself. Now, in active mode, the suit's stealth field generator comes online. Its matte finish ripples and blurs, resolving itself into a nigh-perfect representation of the terrain that lies behind it, making the suit and its wearer all but transparent, even to visual identification. In this way, the stealth suit's form is blended into the background, as if its wearer were a Terran chameleon. In addition, when operating in active mode, the stealth suit systems are actively interfering and jamming with enemy sensor devices. In doing so, the jamming itself will give away the fact that a stealth suit is present, but they will have no way of identifying where it's currently at. And thus, the pilot is afforded a great degree of protection, while also making him or her nearly impossible to target in this dense terrain that they usually fight in. Now the actual armory and war gear that the stealth suit carries varies from stealth suit to stealth suit. Now this is due to its experimental nature, but it usually depends on the actual wielder of this suit. Commander Shadowsun's stealth suit is currently armed with two arm-mounted fusion blasters, which provide short-range anti-vehicle firepower. Now, although it was originally designed to be armed with twin burst cannons, her XV-22 also has a multi-tracker, an advanced target lock which allows her to effectively target multiple enemies, and a bonding knife as well as a drone controller, which she uses to control two shield drones and a command-linked drone. Now the stealth suit of Shas O Kais is usually armed with one of these two weapons, either a flamer, a plasma rifle, a fusion blaster, or a burst cannon. Now he is usually armed with shoulder mounted missile pods, as well as with an advanced sensor array that allows him to detect enemy troops that are camouflaged using stealth technology. He also goes into battle, usually with a drone controller, which he uses to control either a gun or shield drone. His XV-22 has also been fitted with Iridium Armor in order to grant it more protection from enemy fire, though at a loss of speed. And finally, we come to the last commander, Shas O Ores Kaz, which has been armed with two weapons, usually a flamer, burst cannon, fusion blaster, or a cyclic ion blaster. It is also armed with shoulder mounted missile pods and equipped with an advanced sensor array, a shield generator, and a drone controller, which they use to both use a shield generator and a marker drone. So, very similar armament to that of Shas O Kais. Now another thing to note, which you kind of infer from the previous, is that the XV-22 stealth suit weapons are designed to be fully compatible with normal Crisis battlesuit weapon systems, meaning that it is modular and you can scavenge for different weapons from fallen battlesuits, etc. And it just makes this battlesuit a lot more tactically versatile on the field. And that concludes the lore for the XV-22 stealth battlesuit for the Tau Empire. Now, if you guys want a little bit more information, head on over to the wiki page and the Lexi Canon, or just pick out that old 7th edition Tau Codex for more info. Now, I can't wait till they bring out the 8th edition Codex for the Tau, because I want to know what new stuff they're going to add in there, because as, as we've seen, even the Grey Knights had new units, so that is going to be awesome. But the way it looks like now, we may not even get any Xenos Codices till next year, because we got Nurgle coming up, 
Then they've got, I believe it's Guitari. And I'm pretty sure they're going to want to put out Blood Angels, Space Wolves, Dark Angels. So, eh, and I'm pretty sure they're going to throw in Chaos as well. So we'll, we'll see what exactly happens. But it's not looking so good for all you Xenos players. Eh? That's me including. So anyway, head on over to our Facebook page for more things 40k, as well as our Patreon, where a simple dollar gets you more things 40k. And then we got an Instagram and a Twitter page as well. So don't forget guys, we do have giveaways going out. So check out all our videos in the past week. Um, there's three chances for you guys to win, as well as awesome, awesome giveaway prizes coming up next month for our viewer appreciation. So subscribe because you may end up winning something one of these months, hopefully. And that's all I've got. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.